What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Terra Randoma. We haven't played this game in about a year, and the game's probably had, I think I counted six major updates since the last time that we played it. So the development team is moving fast, they're getting things put together, and the game is growing. If you've never seen Terra Randoma before, actually, like, last time we played this game, it was much more of a roguelike than it is now. Not as much of a roguelike anymore, very much more of just kind of an open-world sandbox RPG. Since the last time we tried the game out, you'll see this in just a minute, they've adjusted some things around and they've made the experience a lot more customizable. In the process, it's lost a little bit of that permadeath roguelike feeling. But at the same time, it also increases the diversity of people that can actually, like, play the game. Because some people are just like, permadeath, I'm out. I don't want to play that. And so, anyways, we'll talk about why that is in just a second when we start a new game. You'll see what's in there. Uh, but Terra Randoma, open world, sandbox, roguelike. It's very, very, very light on, like, narrative. It's very light on graphics. But otherwise, it's actually a fairly enjoyable game if you're looking for a roguelike that sticks to the standard tropes of the genre and does them all at a competent level. So anyways, let's dive on in. The game continues to be in early access, so if after watching this you wanted to check out the early access, I will have a link for you down below in the description. Then aside from that, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to hang out live and give me some of your thoughts. Let's play. Uh, so at the beginning of the game, we're going to have to decide what our character is going to be named. We'll name him Splattercat because it's easy and it's fast. We've got to decide what sort of class we want to play. Apparently, there is a fire acrobat who can blow fire breath. That's actually kind of cool. There's a druid who is apparently brave and does alchemy and has lots of wilderness survival. Yeah, I might try out a druid. I think I've mostly played the Highlander, like the, the Viking, basically. I like the sound of the druid. Uh, there is a brigand who starts out apparently with heavy armor and two-handed weapons, all right. We've got a sage down here who's doing some wizard stuff. We've got an arcanist. We've also got a tempest, which is apparently like a storm mage. Yeah, let's try out the fire acrobat. I'm trying to get my circus on out here. Uh, for once, yeah, let's do something casty. So this character is good with one-handed weapons, meditation, light armor, athletics, and bravery. I'll have to derive what exactly that means in just a second. We also get to choose a star sign. And we probably want to pick something that's going to be advantageous to the overall idea of our character. So we could go with, like, alchemy. We could get alchemy from the raven to go along with the fact that we're kind of like a caster. We could go with a little bit of wilderness survival, might help while we're out in the overworld. We've got swiftness, intimidation, athletics, meditation, two-handed weapons, okay. Actually, let's try out, I want to do the druid, we'll try the druid instead. I like the idea I was thinking about, I like the idea of nature magic better than I like the idea of setting things on fire. I know, shocking, most people would probably go the on fire route, but I kind of dig, I don't know what bear's call does, but I want to try it out. And then we will focus on, I don't know, we'll make our druid maybe a little bit more survival-y. Swiftness might be good, too. I mean, swift is the coursing river, you know, with all the strength of a great typhoon, that kind of stuff. Could go with a little bit of athletics. Or we could go with something like speechcraft so we can talk our way through things. Yeah, let's go speechcraft. Let's get a little bit of charisma in there to mix on into the overall idea, and then we'll start our game off. At the beginning of the game, this is new. This wasn't a thing the last time I played the game, I don't think. Uh, but this is what I wanted to talk about, and this is ultimately why we're going from the beginning of the game instead of going from, like, three or four hours in. Uh, is just largely because the game has changed its fundamental structure. Now you can customize what map type you want to play on. The last time we played the game, I think... Pretty much moderate was the only option that you really had. Now you can decide if you want to play on like a large continent with very, very little sailing and kind of like taking boats around. Uh, we can go with fragmented, which has kind of like a, I don't know, kind of a... Like a fractal thing going on. And then you can also go with an archipelago, I guess, if you really want to like ramp up the naval action. Because you can get a boat in this game and like sail around if you want. Uh, you can also change the size of the map. So we will go for a large map. And that large map will be, let's call it fragmented, because it's new, and I want to play around with it. Uh, the game also has modes now that you can select from, so you can get rid of the permadeath entirely with no consequences for dying. You just reload from your last save. Uh, we've also got hero mode, which means that when you die, you wake up in the last town you went to, you lose a fat chunk of gold, a bunch of reputation, and progression. Or you can go back to the classic mode, which it originally came out with in early access, which is Iron Man. And I do think that this is good. It increases accessibility. It makes the game... 
it opens the game up to far, far more players. I think it's a smart idea. In addition, there's also difficulty controls over here, which I don't think existed the last time I played the game. I'd have to go back and watch my last video, but I have no recollection of it. Then again, I'm the kind of person that has a very, very scattered memory, like 100 games a week come across my desk. And so sometimes things bleed together, but it does have customizable difficulties you can play around with too. So if you just want to experience the game, you can throw it on easy. If you want to be like hardcore and be a true jukebox hero, you can throw it on up to very hard. Do whatever you want to do. For right now, we'll play on hero mode because that sounds like a good time. And let's dive on in. Legend tells a story about an ancient horror that awakens every 10,000 years and devours the world before it sleeps again. Only a handful of people who can read the omens know that the time is near. But there's hope, an ancient tablet which shows the nest of his sleeping horror. A tablet divided into five pieces and hid away in five different places. So like, why, why would you hide that? I just, I have a question about this. This seems like a fairly important piece of antiquity to be aware of. Like, obviously, we all know that every 10,000 years this is going to happen. Why not just keep the whole tablet, like, in one place, in, like, a vault? That way, when the cataclysm comes along, we can just grab it real quick and be like, yeah, da, 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 go, like, go down the list and be like, okay, uh, we got to do step one, step two, step three, like a recipe for saving the realm. See, now, now we gotta hustle all over the world to get all the pieces back together, and it just seems like a complicated undertaking given the fact that everything's falling apart. Uh, five Lords of the Realm each knows one of the pieces' whereabouts. They don't trust each other, and they don't trust you. You have to earn their goodwill and collect all five pieces to face the entity before it awakens. Alright, let's go for it. We'll give it the old college try and see if we can pull it out the other end. All right, so this is Terra Randoma. The first thing you're going to notice is that the game is not much of a looker. It's not a pretty game, but it is a game that's functional. So apparently this allows me to shapeshift into a bear, which is pretty rad. And then this one right here lets me do a line of frost that damages multiple enemies. That is also rad, and I want to do it right now. Uh, it is very expensive, though. So in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got our HP, we've got our stamina, we've got our food meter. You do have to feed yourself while you're walking around the realm. Uh, we have sprint over here. We can also bypass a turn. This is our ammo. This is how many keys for chests we have. Our gold, our XP. We can go to our backpack, and we can take a look at our full stat spread if we want to. Our character is actually polymorphed into a boat right now. Uh, we also have a couple of foods, we got some stamina potions, we got some health potions, resistances, all that kind of good stuff, so let's dive on in. The first thing we really need to do is find, like, a city. Is there a city around here? Uh, looks like we've got Basin High over there, or we can go to Swan Lore. So I'm gonna make my way over to Basin High. There's a pretty strong possibility this game has randomized events as you're traveling along the road. And so you may be attacked by bandits or spiders or any of that kind of stuff while you're moving around. You found an abandoned camping place. Do you want to investigate? Sure, we can take a look around. Oh, there's there's giant centipedes. Yeah, okay. Um, Turn into a bear and smash these cats up. There you go. Yeah, they can hardly bear the torrent of damage I'm throwing in their direction. Can I unshape shift or does it like do it on its own? Oh, it does it on its own. So this centipede had a whole bunch of arrows stuck in him, so that's good. That'll add to our ammo counter. And we found some alchemy ingredients, just in case we wanted to get live with the crafting, or we can take them over to the alchemist tower, and we can just sell them. This guy's also got a polished moonstone hidden up his butt. Unfortunately, no prison pocket is safe from me. I don't think there's anything we can actually do with the campsite. These are kind of just little procedurally generated adventures that'll pop up from time to time. While you're walking around, the battlefields will frequently be littered uh, with random stuff. The game controls with the mouse. I think you can also use... You can also use the numpad if you want to, but I find with this game it's just easier to use the mouse. So here in Basing High, we need to find ourselves a job. Let's do that. Uh, there's a patron in the tavern and needs a capable person. I need help on a matter. What is it? My cousin Mildred has been kidnapped by Pestgar the Bandit. He's imprisoned in the Pestgar's Bandit Hideout. What will be my prize? 485 gold, 17 reputation, and the settlement will become more prosperous. Ah, uh, we've got Speechcraft? Yeah, there we go. Let's talk it up a little bit, see if we can get paid more. How far away is this? I have questions. Sometimes it's really, really far away. Uh, it's not close. I mean, it's it's definitely on the opposite end of the realm, and we're going to have to weave our way around very carefully in order to get there. So I will probably get down with my travels, but we should probably resupply first. I'm going to go to the shop, and I'm going to sell off some of these things that we have. They're not worth very much, but we could use some more food. 
So I will take some more food. We'll get some grapes, and we'll get like... I don't know. Is there anything else that's a lizard egg? Yeah, that sounds good. We'll take one of those. You got anything in the potion shop? Like, what does the potions cost? Large health potion sounds like an okay plan. Oh, 497. I was looking at the card right there. Yeah, this game has like a weird system where what is quoted to you on the card is almost never what anything costs or what anything sells for. Uh, you got to check the little tab over on the, pot, the top right that like flips out. I'd actually prefer it if like they just kind of adjusted the value on the item card itself. I think the reason why they do that is because this game has a trade system where you can actually move items in between locations based on what they need and what they don't need. And so that's probably the workaround right there so that you can keep tabs on like the baseline value. But still, I actually can't afford anything. I'm too poor. Uh, so, you know, life imitates art. Let's get on our way. I don't know where I'm going. I'm taking my time, but I don't know where. Oh, we're being attacked by Spidarians. Uh, I failed to avoid them. All right, well, then I will fight them. I will battle the spiders. There we go. Freeze them up inside of a block and then smack them up a little bit with my stick. Uh, my stick smacking is not going very well right now. I very much wish that my stick beating was going better. We'll freeze him up and down goes the spider. Spider dropped some spider eggs. We actually murdered them and stole their children. We have low stamina right now. Having low stamina means that your, uh, I, I think it means that your food meter goes down very, very, very quickly. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot. Oh, there's another spider over here. All right, well, I'll just beat you to death with a stick. Uh, every character in this game comes equipped with a ranged weapon. You don't even really need to worry about it. I actually think that that's a really elegant way to handle it. If the enemy is outside your melee range and you click on them, you will just automatically fire your ranged weapon at them. Some characters are better with ranged weapons than others, but I do find that to be a nice little thing. Oh, we should probably eat some food. Let me see if I can break open the old pack pack. We'll eat some grapes real quick. I like grapes. Uh, pro tip, if you like grapes too, take your grapes and put them in the freezer first before you eat them. We're surrounded by centipedes. Avoid the encounter. We failed. I am a failure. A failure as a druid. Oh boy, I'm getting eaten alive by these centipedes. Wow, they're doing a lot of damage right now. Yeah, I may have to call in the big guns and keep, like, freezing them to get out of this. 42 coins, no real treasure to be spoken of, unfortunately. There is a dead guy over here, though, who apparently sucks at adventuring far more than I do. And he's got a potion of bats call. Shapeshift into a bat, which makes you drain life on attack, fly over water. Lava lasts 23 turns. Okay, I can live with that. You can chop down trees, too. If you're, like, ever low on money, you can chop down trees and it'll give you wood that you can sell in town for, like, firewood or whatever. I haven't really done it, but it is a thing that you can do. And do I need to go up right here? There's a very, very thin crossing right there, and I think I can auto-boat across, although we should probably camp for a second. We're kind of beat up. Yeah, there we go. Resting for eight hours. Got our... Got a little bit of our health back because that meter was looking a little bit scanty. Uh, we are surrounded by cultists. Nafar, the suffering oathbreaker. Beware, mortal. The forgotten god is coming. Donate money to our cause or your existence will be an uncertainty. Uh, I pickpocket you. Yay, we stole from him. And then we tell him to get lost. Oh, we failed. Uh, how about we... Nope, it's just not possible. All right, well, I guess we'll just fight. I tried to talk my way out of it. I did my best. It's time to go bear mode. Look for the bear necessities. That, that, that bear model makes me crack up. All right, that guy's running for it, so I don't think we have to worry about him. This guy will just... Did he go invisible on me? I think he did. He went invisible on me. He dropped the hat, though, and he dropped the gem. And so we've got, like, a little bit of money coming on in. I need to eat some food. Yeah, I think that'll work for right now. We don't have a whole lot of food left, but that'll work for the moment. Do I even have a hat on? Okay, put that on because we're getting hit kind of hard. And so now I've got my, like, Mother Mary hat on right now. You coming back, bro? There we go. I get the feeling our character is not very good at fighting. So let's see if we can do something about that. I think we're actually going to have to take meditation with our skill point because it looks like every five points or so... It makes us use up less stamina when we use our talent stones. And I'm getting the feeling from this guy that our stones are going to be heavily arranged in the direction of magic and casting. 
Over here, we've got critical hit chance. We've got a little bit of strength, and we've got a little bit of intelligence. I'll probably just take a little bit of strength for right now so that we hit a little bit harder. We've got a tad more clunk, a little bit more oof uh, to our interactions with the world. We've got a copper amulet right there. Do I even have an amulet on? I do not have an amulet on. Good. Well, now we have an amulet on, so we're rocking plus two stamina. It's not very much, but it's something. And then we can heal over here at this pool. Oh no, dude, but it spawned a coral spider. Coral spiders are immune to ice. That's one of those things they failed to tell me when I went to coral spider school. What is that? An altar full of items, gold, and food? Uh, yes. Yes. I'll take that. We found ourselves an amethyst. The ancient Greeks used to think that amethysts would make you recover from a hangover faster if you wore, like, an amethyst amulet. That's why it's amethyst. Uh, we failed again at escaping. I'm failing at a lot of these skill checks right now. I get the feeling that my character is maybe not particularly talented in this regard. I'm gonna go bear mode. Look for the bear depravities, those simple bear depravities. I'm gonna claw you with my big ol' paw. Alright, so we're gonna get the- ooh, there's a dead farmer over here. He's got a dirter on him. That's actually kind of good because I needed a snack. I don't know if it's like a sin to eat a dead guy's snack, but like I'm gonna eat the dead guy's snack, basically apologize later rather than ask permission. That's the way I feel about it. There's the Adventurer's Guild. That's where you can get new skills if you're looking to add more spells to your hotbar or whatever. Uh, Sethwick the Enraged Rogue. Yeah, he does look like he's been missing out on some sleep lately. That's no lie. Uh, stop right there, stranger. Give us 146 gold or taste our bitter blade. I failed to pickpocket him. I failed to intimidate him. I failed to talk him down. I don't know if my dice are just awful. I feel like at this point, if I was playing like a tabletop RPG, I'd need to go to the game shop and buy a new set of dice. I think these ones were cast kind of wrong. Oh, I can't shoot a bow because I'm a bear and they lack the articulation in their thumbs to fire a bow. Uh, we did get $36 for two cases of homicide. And then over here, we've got a wooden chest. Wooden chest has gold. It's got a honey jar and a jade ring. I like jade. Jade is beautiful. Uh, I am going to wear that jade ring. There are some weird things right here with the UI. Sometimes, like, I've noticed the item will, like, go behind the frame right here every now and again. And then, like, honestly, I feel like when it puts the ring off to the right like that, like, my natural inclination is to grab the ring and just drop the picture on there instead of, like, the hand. But for whatever reason, I always get tripped up on that. Now, let's see. We need to eat some food. But all of my food is actually kind of too beefy. I guess I'll go up right there. That's fine. We should start regenerating, too, I think, because our food is so high. We may want to camp outside the bandit hold. Get our HP back. Uh, but we got attacked by spiders. But I successfully avoided the encounter, which gave me some XP. And that's really... This strikes me as one of those games that's very much heavily inspired by tabletop gaming. Uh, where you've got, like, options and things, and you get XP for all of them. Uh, bear mode. <laughs> Okay, bear mode went pretty well. Get him with the ice block, beat on him a little bit. Uh, this guy's got 22 HP though, which is actually kind of concerning. I'm gonna drink a stamina potion. I think we got him. There we go. He got bad damage rolls the entire time, so we got kind of lucky with that fight. Ooh, nice, a bronze ring. We got a sapphire. There's lots of looty items in this game. There's tons of fiddly diddly, like, looty items that you can sell to people, and I absolutely love that. That's one of my favorite things about Stone Shard, too, is just the sheer volume of random little knickknacks and stuff you can find around that you can sell. We got some armor. We got a bow. Yeah, sounds good. What else we got in here? We got a heavy armor bronze belt. We've got a bronze letter opener, some polished jade, a couple of lockpicks for getting into chests. Yes, sir. Not a bad come up. Uh, the tree is unfortunately stealing. I don't know. Maybe her cousin was a tree. He's stealing the cinematography right now, though. Thank you for saving me. Let's get out of here, shall we? I don't know if I have to escort this guy back, like, personally. I don't think I can camp inside of, like, a, a zone where we just fought either. But we do want to equip all this stuff because I think we were just kind of gifted. Do I have any talents in... Let's see here. Do I have any... I don't have any talent in heavy armor. But I also don't have any talent 
and light armor. So technically, I feel like we can just wear it. So we'll put on the heavy belt. There we go. Heavy belt is now on our character, nice and shining. Uh, we've got some boots right there that are better than the boots that we currently have, so we'll throw those on. Man, there's some big old Doc Martens, dude. We're out here stomping. Uh, we've got a wool vest, which is one defense better than what we've got on our chest. And so, actually, this should have been a major update for our character. We've also got a copper short bow that hits for two more damage than our old bow, so that's nice as well. Give us a few more ranged options to play around with, just in case the enemy decides to, like, space us out. All right. I'm always spaced out. That's my secret in life. Uh, we've got to go all the way back to whence we came. So, I'm going to do that. And I'll just deal with any, like, events and things that happen. And we'll bring it back in once I get back to town. All right. Back in Basin High. Apparently, they have a pandemic going on right now. I don't remember what the pandemic does. Uh, yes, they want me to... Okay, so we have eight days. And so no traders are coming here. But were we to bring cure disease or health potions, they will pay a huge premium on those. And so as you can see, there are, like, it's a game with a simplistic presentation, but there are little bits and bobs of depth here. And then it's got, like, kind of a Diablo-style randomly generated loot system where you can get, you know, like, the sinister boots. You can get the sinister boots of the bat or something like that, and it'll have a bunch of stats and things on it. And I do think that that makes it compelling. I've enjoyed this game, like, every time I've come back to it. Really, the only thing I've ever wanted for this game is just for it to have, like, a better tile set and graphics. But, like, I play a lot of games in, like, ASCII and stuff like that, too, like Cataclysm DDA. So, like, it's not a huge hinging factor for me. All right, so back to the tavern. We'll turn in our quest. Here is your reward. 242 XP, 17 of reputation. We now have two stars worth of reputation and 582 gold so we've actually got a little bit of a bankroll now uh, we kind of don't want to be here while the pandemic is happening that's just facts uh, being here while the pandemic is taking place is just a terrible idea but as you can see they are buying health potions for way over market value uh, so I think it's a good idea to sell that stuff over there and then the things that you sell here do adjust the settlement prosperity and your reputation if you're supplying a need that they have. I don't want to sell the rest of my stuff here because it's all on a pretty deep markdown. I have one fish left. How far is there another quest here? There is not. Okay, uh, I think I have 25% reputation. Lord Rockin, do you know the relics of the Knight Silius the Rude? They are in the labyrinth of the otherworldly fighter. I will mark the place on your map. Thank you, Kingly Individu. That's a baller chain right there. I respect that. I respect the chain game. Uh, it's three skulls. We're not quite ready for that yet. Instead, oh, Thimbleshire also has a pandemic. Brutal. There's actually, like, nothing on this side of the map that is not coated in just Nurgle juice right now. Okay, maybe we'll walk over to Swanlore, see what quests they have, see if we can level up a little bit further. Uh, we are surrounded by hyenas, kind of diverse wildlife around here. We've had, like, giant centipedes. We've had hyenas. I believe we've been attacked by, you know, like... Just about every animal from every biome you could imagine. There's a dead farmer. A hey, salmon cavy. Okay, I was excited about that till I read what it was. I thought it was like a mason jar full of gemstones. I was wrong. My eyeballs betray. I'm not excited about caviar at all. I don't think I've ever had caviar, but like, you find a small cave entrance with ancient symbols. Do you want to investigate? Yeah, sure. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, guys with spears are the worst that could happen. And they're running like crazy. There's one down. Got a little worried for a second just because we don't really... There we go. He's down. The other guy's running in fear. He's got a copper short bow. Very nice. We can sell it. He's also got a flawless purple garnet. And a lime, just in case you wanted to, like, spruce it up. I don't know. Whenever I see a picture of a real-life lime, it just remember Like, they changed around... You know the fruits... You know the cereal tricks? They changed it around, man. When I was a kid, the little, the little things inside the trick cereal actually looked like various fruits, like little bananas and limes and things. Now they're just, like, this weird, like, hexagonal cluster of colorfulness. I miss that. That's what limes always remind me of. They remind me of, oh, damn, that's a cool necklace. Uh, we've got a vial of royal nectar. Okay. 
I love how rewarding this game feels. Like, actually doing stuff in this game, you get rewards that feel consequential. Like, I like the fact that the game is not afraid to give you loot. It's another thing that I really, really like about Last Epoch, which I've been playing a lot lately, is that it's another game that's not afraid to give you loot. Like, yeah, most of it's going to be useless, but it's always fun and good for the old dopamine receptors when you're fighting and, like, a giant explosion of loot goes off whenever you kill a guy. That's, like, the best. That's what we all crave right there. Uh, so instead of the two stamina, I'm going to take the eight stamina since we're doing a lot of casting and having low stamina has really been eating up my food meter. These other amulets will probably sell when we get to town. You ever wonder why it is that you can't wear, like, seven magic necklaces in a video game? Like, I don't know. I've seen, like, some heavy metal guys. And I've seen dudes at concerts that have, like, six necklaces on. You know what I mean? Why can't you just do that with magic necklaces? I'm pretty sure in D&D &D it gives you some vague explanation. Like, there's, like, a there's a magnetic field around every mag around every magical item, and the magnetic fields, they propel, they repel each other, and you can't keep it on. I'm like, ah, we could probably work around that. We can probably work. You're telling me that for a thousand years of fantasy existence, there is a minotaur sleeping on the side of the road? Uh, we go around because he's a minotaur, bro. I'm not trying to mess with a minotaur right now. Nope. Not for a second. Uh, swan lore. They apparently have safe roads, so banditry is not really happening here. I don't know if safe roads... What does safe roads actually do? The roads are safe, so I have loads of supplies, and they're 20% cheaper. That's probably bad, because I need to sell a bunch of stuff here. But I need the cash infusion more than anything else. So I'm just going to sell off all the things that I have on me. And I know I'm probably getting a bad price for them, but the inventory is getting kind of full. And your boy needs to get paid. Like, having some money clinking around in my pocket is better than having no money. And so we've sold a whole bunch of stuff right there. Uh, I do think they should add a sort button to this inventory right here that will sort things out by their category, like potions, necklaces, armor, that kind of stuff. This game does have full-on dungeons. That's what you're seeing over on the other side on the map that the king just gave us the quest for. Basically, the entire game is you wandering around the map trying not to die so that you can get your reputation high enough in all five cities to find the five pieces of the tablet, then go to the ultimate dungeon. There's always, like, a newbie quest, and then after you do the newbie quest, the king will give you the actual real dungeon. And these guys right here are, like, multi-floor dungeons that you really, really want to prep for. Like, I can't stress that enough. You really want to bring, like, a lot of potions, a lot of things with you, a lot of food, uh, because they can be lengthier than you might expect, at least from what I recall about the game. We'll go to the tavern, and we've got a job over here. I need safe passage to the city of Hound Sand. Uh, yeah, I can take you to Hound Sand. Can we haggle? Oh, nice, we haggled. Sweet. So we get a little bit more money for it. Uh, does the historian have anything going on? Buy this historian a meal, and I will tell you an inspirational tale that you've never heard of. Sure, I just got paid. What does that do? Plus two damage? Hell yeah, that's what's up. Okay, uh, let's go to the shop. They said that they were overstocked on things right now, which makes me think that we can probably get a good deal on something awesome. Uh, yeah, that erratic velvet right there. Oh, it's 4,400. Man, I looked at the card again. I was so excited. I was trying to get myself a Santa suit of adventure. I was trying to roll throughout the, the hills and glens like, ho, ho, ho. Uh, we've got a shield over here. What about weapons? Can I afford a weapon? I don't think I can afford any of that. Do we have, like, we got, like, a stick over here that's got a chance to fear the enemy. We've got a stick over here that's got 9% ice, whatever that means. I assume that it does damage and it gives us plus two defense. We're really only getting the secondary effect out of all of these, though. We're not really getting much out of the damage. A sword of lightning. I assume it has a 5% chance to cast a lightning spell is what I'm guessing on that one. Well, I can't afford any of the fun, cool stuff, man. All right, fine. Uh, I will buy a health potion because I got rid of my old health potions. And if you've got potions of cure disease... If I could take those elsewhere, we could get paid. No potions of cure disease. A lot of health potions, though. 
technically we could probably make a lot of money right now just running health potions back and forth, but like... Ah, oh, well. Is there any good rings? There's a six stamina ring over here that gives us 4% crit chance, but things are kind of pricey, so we're probably going to have to walk away. Where's this other quest at? Uh, oh, yeah, we had to take her up to Hound Sand. Oh, that's a long walk. All right. Walk we shall. Well, there's somebody on the road that wants to steal our ward, the person that we're protecting right now. I thought it was a cultist. Oh, it is a cultist. Okay, but it's also a coral spider. Uh, we'll turn into a bear real fast, and we'll drop that guy. That's right. That's right. Woodland bear is terrified of no crab. I'll tell you that right now. And we've got an altar over here where we can get stocked back up on goodies. Strength 1, ranged attack 2, stamina 2. I think the randomized loot was one of the best ideas they had with this game. Without it, I think this game would definitely be much poorer. Like, I feel like the game would be a lot less justifiable without the loot system that they have right now. Oh, I'm out of food. Okay, I guess I'll eat my caviar. Didn't realize I was out of food. We're gonna have to resupply. Ain't no way around it. We've got a long walk in front of us, too. I spent my entire paycheck on food. Weirdly enough, lots of seafood, even though in real life I don't like seafood. Tracks of deer? Yeah, you can follow the tracks. Oh, we found the deer. There they are. Sure. Yeah, pop off some shots at them. They're going to get away, aren't they? Man. I got to get my range damage up. That was just embarrassing, dude. We got skunked. That feels terrible on the hunting trip. Somebody else got something and we didn't. Nope, don't like that. Found an old statue on the side of the road to a long-forgotten ranger. Will you investigate? Sure. Absolutely. Oh, a phantom fish man. Curious. The phantom fish man is apparently not friendly. The good news is that phantom fish men seem to have an innate weakness to being clawed by giant bear claws. We've got some bone dust and some ectoplasm. Okay. What does this do? There is an inscription on the pedestal in a small hole to drop coins in memory of the great hero Winhor or Winthor, <laughs> the Iron Head. Donate 100 coins and be blessed by Hunter's Grace for several days. Uh, it would be super rad if this statue was your previous characters that you had played on roguelike mode or your previous characters that you have other saves with. If it, like, mixed those in with the random ones. Ooh, I'd like that a lot. I'll take Hunter's Grace. Oh, it's a little kitty, it's a little kitty picture. Yay, kitties. Uh, let's go ahead and we will eat a salmon filet real fast because we're living high on the hog. And I'm going to try to make it to Hound Sand. I made it to Hound Sand. It was a bit of a long walk, but apparently they're trying to abduct the person that I'm protecting. Get lost. Yeah, intimidate skill on point. Just turn into a bear and hit him with that <laughs> noise that bears make. That's what's up. We completed our mission, so that's nice. We've also got another quest over here. Now, let's see here. My family heirloom, the copper spoon. Not my copper spoon! Such a rarity as... Ugh, can you imagine eating off a copper spoon? Oh, that'd be the worst. Like, that copper taste would, like, eke into the food. Oh, God. Why do you want that back? It sounds like the bandit did you a favor. All right. We gotta go, we gotta go murder some bandits on behalf of randos that we bumped into while drunk. Such is the way of RPGs. Apparently, it's actually not that far, though. We can go on over there. Well, I made it to the bandit hideout, but the bad news is I got tetanus. So, unfortunately, we now have tetanus. Uh, we can, we can go, we can go level up. I think leveling up is probably a strong idea. Uh, meditation level 5 gives us that sweet, sweet 20% less stamina for using our stones. And so I'm going to go ahead and take that because that's going to knock like four or five off the cost of using those abilities. And then we'll probably put another one in strength just so that we can keep beefing with the enemy a little bit. Like staying on a strong footing. And then we will rest for eight hours. And then we're going to eat some food. And then we're going to wipe out these bandits and everything's going to be okay. Uh, I definitely have enough potions. I have potions coming out of my ears. Apparently tetanus makes me really bad at speech crap because I've got locked jaw. I can't move. I can't move my jaw. Did you just hit me for six? Ow, dude. 
We're actually kind of getting shredded right now. Okay, all right. Yeah, we'll take a health potion. That's that's why we have them. That's precisely the kind of situation in which you would want to have like a, a health potion. We found a sorceress encyclopedia. Okay. What's uh? Why you running? Just a minute ago, you wanted this smoke. See, you stopped to take a shot. That's where you messed up. A wooden ring. I don't even know if that's worth picking up. I don't even think that's a valuable... A wooden ring, huh? All right, what you got in these chests? Well, there's the quest item for the copper spoon. And then we've got a pearl. We've got a copper ring and a bronze ring. Yeah, altogether, not the best adventure I've ever been on, but it's an adventure that will do. Uh, but yeah, this game does have full-length dungeons. I think I did one the last time we covered the game. I went in prematurely, and I think we died in there. Which is why this time I was trying to go, like, and, like, avoid it and, like, do some world quests and stuff like that. Because getting stomped out on camera in front of a global audience is very humbling. And I just, I don't know. I, I feel like my morale is at, like, kind of a middling level right now. And I just, I, I don't want to, I don't want to jeopardize that with getting stomped out. That's about it. Uh, my only thoughts about the game are... Uh, that I think it's actually a pretty competent little open world RPG if you're looking for something entirely procedural that doesn't really have anything else going on with it. Like, the, the whole thing is randomized, you know what I mean? But there are little systems of trade and leveling up and customizing your character that I think are fine. I do think the game could use better soundtracking, though, strangely enough. The game seems to have an underabundance of music. Uh, there's not a whole lot of music in the game, and I think some overworld travel music and some various musics, other than just, like, atmospheric sounds, uh, for some of the dungeons and for some of the areas would be really, really nice. Like, right now, it's completely and totally quiet, so much so that I even checked. Uh, I looked in the options, and I was like, do I have it, like, disabled or something? Was I playing this game while listening to Spotify? Uh, no, not the case. And so, soundtracking, I definitely think that should be a priority, getting some music in the background, uh, getting some jaunty tunes and some threatening dungeon vibes going on uh, would be very, very nice. And then aside from that, like a sort button inside the inventory to sort all the stuff to the top left and get it all situated. Uh, but other than that, like a pretty, pretty solid back to basics, no frills, open world roguelike in my opinion. Like, you know, if you wanted to fiddle around with something that's maybe at a middle point between like classic roguelikes and like Diablo... You know what I mean? And you're like burned out on Tales of Majayal or whatever, which is probably the closest thing I would actually compare this game to is Tales of Majayal. Uh, but anyways, if you're burned out on Tales of Majayal and you're looking for something like Tales of Majayal but a little bit lighter, uh, this is not a terrible choice in my opinion. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, but up until then, it's time for me to go. Bye, everybody.